Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to get on here and film a fitness movement video. As you know, my channel touches on several themes, beauty, lifestyle, and fitness. I am an instructor and I also train independently and I'm looking to start workshops soon here in NYC. And a lot of you ask questions about uh, wrist stuff, hip flexibility, mobility. And I wanted to start creating videos touching on those different parts of the body. Today's video is on wrists and I owe a lot of my knowledge to Samantha Starr who is an instructor at Body and Pole, Miguel and Ola who are professional hand balancers and who have been my coaches in the past and currently, and also to the facility in Denver, Colorado, Awaken Gymnastics where I trained for a week a big thank you to them for their hospitality and for their incredible instructors and all of their knowledge. Lots of times, even though all this information is on the internet, I am here to relay a lot of the information that I have been exposed to, whether it is from the internet or from a class I attended, from a workshop, from a retreat. And a big thank you to Barry, who is the owner of this beautiful home. I babysit her dog quite often and her lighting is amazing and I just figured I'd take the opportunity to film some content and you know this is a great couch. Any movements requiring work from the wrists should have some prep. Lots of times if we go straight from typing especially if you are in the office a lot and a lot of this is happening in your daily life even with the the iPhone or any device our wrists take a toll they're usually very tight from those movement patterns so it's very important that we before go into a 90 degree angle with them to warm them up and prep them for that work and it doesn't have to just mean for handstands even push-ups can prove very painful if your wrists aren't properly prepared I like to interlace my fingers make sure my palms are clasped and take slow circles around and if you hear that click 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 sound that means we have to get them a little more mobile, a little more smooth in those joints. You could take as many as you like. A rough estimate, 10 one way is good. And once you've reached that count, you reverse. And I'm not loosey-goosey with it. My fingers are clasped, my palms are tight, and I go through a very articulate circle here all the way around and getting smooth into those points that feel rough. You give it a shake, and now let's get into some stretches. Spread the finger super wide and make sure your index finger is pointing straight forward. First thing you might want to do is practice grabbing the floor with your fingertips. This is also a great warm up for your fingers and just to get some blood flowing into your hands and into your wrists. With your hands in that same position, slowly start to shift your shoulders forward past the wrist line. If this is very painful to you, go in slowly and carefully. You want to feel the stretch. You don't want to feel any piercing pain going up through your forearms, up through your shoulders. If that is happening, lessen the range of motion. And once it feels more comfortable, start to move in further. This is one of my favorite stretches to do before I do anything else. Again, on all fours, you shift forward and back. And I like to do a ton of these. These get my wrists really warm, open for my push-up work, for my handstand drills. And we hold it forward here past the wrist line of touch and gently just shift your shoulders side to side. Make sure your hands, the fingers, are spread wide the entire time. I see a lot of my students do push-ups with the pancake hands and it's really not maximizing your strength of your hands because you're not taking up as much of a surface area when your fingers are close together. When they're wider, you can have more grab, it can activate a little more and bring in more engagement so that you can lift out of your wrist instead of just dropping into them. Taking it side to side, Again, as many as you like, as many that as feel comfortable, 10, 20, however much time you have to spend on this. Next one is fingertips in toward your knees. 
Please start with your knees in close to your fingertips and slowly start to shift back up to your heels. This can be very painful to many. If it is painful, instead of just sitting straight back, maybe slowly start to lower on the heels and then shift forward. And again, just how you would keep your fingers spread as the fingertips are pointing forward, you wanna maintain that same width as they're pointing in. Keeping the fingers wide as you stretch back and you'll feel the stretch all the way from the heel of your hand up through your forearms. This is one of my favorites. I love this stretch. If you wanna get a little crazy, shift forward, bend, and stretch the elbows. You could even do so a little bit when the hips are on the heels. If you want a little more stretch, if this is super easy for you, then you start to walk your knees further back. And the further back the knees, the tougher the stretch. <sighs> Carefully peel off and shake it out. Hello there. Next one is heels of hands together. Make sure heels of hands are touching and keeping over the wrist line, you shift your shoulders side to side. And again, making sure the fingers are wide, they don't close together. Spending a little time as you shift on one side, and then you spend equal amount of time on the other. Side to side for 10, for 12, and then maybe you hold one side for 10 seconds, then you hold the other for 10 seconds, and once you finish that stretch, you shake it out. I don't have a yoga mat, but if you do, I recommend that you do this on a soft surface. It could be a yoga mat, a mat, a pillow. Tops of hands on the floor, and again, keeping your fingers wide still. You want to close and open. This is a toughie. Working to make a tight of a fist as you can. And if it's too painful, lay off. Maybe don't close the fingers as tightly. You only go in as much as you can. Feeling the stretch and not feeling so much pain. Close and open. Do that about 10 times and carefully start to shake it out. Another one you can do is you keep the tops of your hands and again walk the knees in first, then you sit back. If you want to get crazy while sitting back, you close and open the fingers. And just like the one we did prior, the farther your knees are away from your hands, the deeper the stretch. Ooh. Now that we've touched on a lot of stretch and mobility drills for the wrist, let's go over some strength exercises. Strength exercises for your wrist. First one is our first knuckle push-ups. Hands placed right under your shoulders, fingers spread wide, eyes and the elbows forward, so really rotating the shoulders forward. Without bending your elbows, you start to peel the palms off the floor while keeping the knuckles intact with the floor, and you slowly start to peel down. That's the most important part. Try not to clump down and let gravity take over. Use your strength to slow that lowering of your palm. And as you do, you, you'll feel your fingers grab in trying to slow down that movement. Again, slowly lower. And just as you slowly lower, you slowly press up. Ideally, you're trying to get the backs of your hand parallel to the floor. And you're like, what? You can start with 10, work yourself up to 20, and make sure you don't rush here. You take your time. And if being on the floor is too much, you go on the wall, and you do the same thing on the wall as you would do on the floor. And because since I don't have a cameraman for this, please pretend that we have two hands on the wall and your body is in a nice neutral position. Another great exercise that addresses a part of our wrist that often gets neglected, the lateral part of our wrist, is to start with fists and to pull the thumbs down and then pull the elbows back, shoulders to thumbs. Bring them forward, 
bring them back. And again, you can also do that in a full plank position. I definitely recommend that you do that strengthening exercise on a soft surface. My fingers are very bony, and I'm sure as yours will be too. And to do that on a hard wooden floor is not the best. Lastly, we have backs of hand push-ups. This is where you take the backs of your hands, and because I don't have a lot of space here, I'm flush against the sofa, but in all fours, you take the backs of your hands, you lower down shoulders to fingers, and you push into fists. Again, you bend elbows out, chest down, push into fists. From the side, if doing it on all fours is good, you stay right here. Make sure you still keep the core engaged. Nothing is collapsing on the way down. You go down neutral and you push. Eventually, with the first knuckle push-ups as well, you can do these strength exercises in a full plank position, which is very tough. Something definitely to work up towards when you are working to bulletproof your wrist is probably the best thing you can do. Wrist injuries are terrible and they take a long time to repair. And in order to prevent any mishaps, any injuries, any flops with the wrists, important that you do these exercises every day. Not saying you have to spend an hour out of your day on your wrists. Any opportunity you might have, if you're near a wall, if you're on the floor, before a yoga class, Pilates, any class for that matter, any class that requires you to be on your hands during some point, really important that you take the time and warm up your wrists. Just to show you a couple of exercises, why it is important to warm up the wrists, even in a simple plank position. Ideally, when holding a plank, you want to have your shoulders slightly past the wrist line. This is going to bring in more shoulder and core engagement. So we're not hanging out here and behind the hands, but we're really using our hands to hold up the weights. Even for a handstand prep, in order for you to go up, you have to go past the wrist line for your hips to lift off the floor. And the fingertips are working a ton in keeping me from going over completely. That's why it's really important, even if just kicking up to a wall, that the wrists are prepared to take on your weight. I've seen a lot of wrist injuries happen when wrists aren't properly prepared for that type of weight. That yes, even if you're not afraid to kick up to a wall, if you haven't prepared your wrist for that amount of weight, for that amount of flexion, it could get ugly. What I also like to do as a drill for people just learning how to be on their hands for the first time, even without lifting your legs up, just learning how to bring your shoulders past the wrists, to really grab the floor with your hands, with your fingertips, and you hold. That will also help to build strength and improve flexibility in your wrists. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video helped. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm looking to add more strength and flexibility videos to my channel. And of course, feedback is always welcomed. I want these to be as helpful as they can. If you suggest a different camera angle, explanation, different cues, if there are specific exercises, you want to see if there are specific skills you want to unlock that you're having a hard time improving on, let me know down below. And until then, I will see you again soon. Bye!